ready? Yep. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, Jeff asked if I might share my memories and what I know about the Elhart family, our family that came uh, uh, over here in the late 1800s. And actually, I didn't know this, but in the 1700s, the Elhart family, as we know them, were German, lived in Germany. And in the early 1800s, they came to the Netherlands to live. And in the late 1800s, they came uh, across the Atlantic and settled in Grand Rapids, Michigan. That would have been my great-grandfather and grandmother. Uh, I'm not sure about uncles. Of course, my grandfather, and there were two other boys in that family, three actually, uh, Uncle Ben Elhart, uh, uh, got appendicitis when he was 16 years old and died from that. In those days, if you got appendicitis, there wasn't much cure. So anyway, that's a story. And um, settled in Grand Rapids, and my grandpa there uh, did um, construction work, apparently on city roads, um, did some shoveling and work. And um, the story goes that one Saturday afternoon, they gave him, with his pay envelope, a note and said, of course, he talked Dutch, so he, he had it written in, in English, take that down to the drugstore, and the druggist will read it to you. And he took it to the drugstore, and the, the druggist read it and it said, don't come back to work Monday, the job is done. So here he is in Grand Rapids, Michigan, can hardly speak English, and... Uh, needing some income, and they moved to South Blendon, South Blendon, and settled there on a farm. Now, I don't know whether they had to clear the land or the land had been partially cleared, but uh, he, they started growing produce there, and because my dad was the youngest, he would take my dad along with the team and wagon filled with produce to Jenison, Granville, in and uh, uh, West Grand Rapids, and it did that all day long. And on the towards the end of the day, uh, it was time to go home. And they lived off Port Sheldon Road, so th they went back through Granville Jenison to Port Sheldon Road, and then they were six seven miles from where they lived. So they would lay down then in the wagon, cover with a horse blanket, and sleep. And the horses found them their way home, and when they stopped in the front of the barn door, it meant that they were home and they could get out, put the horses away, water them and feed them, and go back to bed themselves. So that's the story of the Elharts in the uh, in the early days in, in South London. And from there, my grandfather, uh, they sold the farm, moved to Zealand, and he had a gravel pit, and he hauled gravel to most of the driveways and many of the cement jobs that were on there, and he had uh, one team of mules and three horse, three teams of horses. So he had four wagons going during the day delivering, delivering gravel. Um, I was born in, uh, of course, in, in May 19, 1929, Holland Hospital, and soon after my birth, uh, the the depression came along. And uh, was tough, tough going for my parents. Dad had a they he had a home paid for, new, or not paid for, but a new home built, and uh, we were living there, living well. And they had uh, lost his job, and so to survive, they moved to a farm north of Lowell. That was my mother's homestead, and it was vacant, and uh, so. The, the decision was to move out there and attempt to make a living on the farm. But the farm had been vacant for a bit and was in disrepair. And uh, the house had several broken windows and it was a mess. But they had four cottages that my grandfather had built and they rented. So they moved there and spent the winter in a cottage with no insulation, built up on, on barrels so the, the, it was open, grand, open underneath the the cottage, and of course, the walls and all. So I don't know how they survived. My sister Clara was a creeper at that time, and I was a couple of years old, 
and they survived the winter, and he worked then on this farm. He had one horse, and one of the neighbors had one horse, and normally when you work with horses, you work with a team with two, so they traded. One day, one would use the horses, the next day, the other one, and uh, survived. So he tells the story, he told the story that he went apparently to the building bank to borrow money to buy some seed and maybe some livestock, I'm not sure. But anyway, come fall, he didn't have all the money to pay back the loan. And they were foreclosing on some of these farms and he was a nervous wreck and scared to death that we'd be living out in the street. So he dressed my sister Claire and I in our best Sunday school clothes, and he took us with him to the bank and introduced us to the banker, thinking surely the banker wouldn't th foreclose on us. And it must have worked because we stayed on the farm. And one other thing I wanted to, oh, the school that I went to, it was Mosley School, and Mosley was a little community north of Lowell, seven miles, and that's where, in those days, you had a little corner grocery store, and you had a, a creamery they processed for cheese, had um, a train depot, of course, was right there, blacksmith shop, in the little red schoolhouse, brick schoolhouse, outside plumbing, and we, my mother had gone to that school and graduated, and later took a train each day to building to go to school to, to, to the ninth grade, and that's as far as she went. Well, anyway, I managed to get through um, the Mosley School. Part of the time I had a classmate, part of the time I didn't. There was only 13, 14 kids in the whole school, and she, one teacher took care of them all. So I graduated from, from the... Uh, Eighth grade, and my dad figured at that time I didn't really need to go on for further education, that I was big enough to work on the farm and he needed help. Uh, my mother intervened in that, and they had a quite a discussion and, and decided that I really should go on to high school. So I did. So I went from a class of just myself to two or three students to 90, and it was quite, quite a change. And then, all of a sudden, they they noted they posted that they were going to have a, a, a class election. And I said, "That sounds like fun. I should be the class president." So I run, and I was elected. And the first the first class meeting, general meeting, I had no clue what parliamentary procedure was. Never heard of it didn't know anything about how you would handle a, a, a meeting like that. And bless his heart, there was a teacher that, um, I, I don't know that he was our Sunday school teacher, maybe his wife was, but felt sorry for me and sat in a chair behind me and said, I'll tell you what to say. He said, the meeting will now come to order. And I said, the meeting will now come to order. And uh, I got, got the hang of it. And it worked because for many years after that, it was the meeting will not come to order. So I made it. I survived. Then, of course, I got uh, my dad. We'd lost our mother at a young, young age, and my dad decided to sell the farm and move back to Holland. That's where his family was. And uh, I had two younger sisters, and I think he was looking for his, his sisters to help with them. So uh, I got a job in what was Reeling Motor Sales. Now it's Barbara Ford for working six and a half days a week. And I got $28 for it. And I, it was really good. And the nice part of it is that at Sundays, I still didn't have to get up to milk cows. So I, I had part of a day off. I had the day off. Anyway, six months I worked there, and I thought I was doing a pretty good job. So I, th I asked them if I could have a raise of $2 for $30. They said, no, they didn't think they could afford it. So, so I stayed for my 28 and then Mr. Barber came along, 
And I asked him for $2, and he paid it. So I got my $2 raise. Uh, then, of course, came uh, the started uh, dating, of course, noticing girls. And, and uh, Jeff and Wayne's mom, Barbara, and I married in uh, June 10th in 1950. And um, we we year and a half later the Korean War broke out, and so and, and they were drafting, and so I enlisted, and that's where I enlisted and stayed in the Coast Guard, so that I could go to school and get a rating and get a little more money because we had forty dollar house payments, and if we didn't really save, we couldn't make those forty dollars. So I knew I needed some additional income. Um, I think I got a couple other things on my mind here. Uh, Barb, uh, <clears throat> Wayne, and in uh, and Jeff's mother and I joined the Methodist Church here in 1950. Same year we were married, and uh, I stayed. I served on the on the finance committee there, and uh, also in in overseeing the county of the of the collections and the deposits of those. And and uh, when I got out of the service, went back to Barbara Ford for work until 1965, when I became a. Pontiac GMC dealer, and that kind of wraps it up for, for the moment. <laughs>